It seems the most logical thing in the world to believe that the natural resources of the earth, upon which the race depends for food, clothing and shelter, should be owned collectively by the race, instead of being the private property of a few social parasites. And this week's opening quote comes from Ralph Chaplin. Welcome to Surviving the Matrix, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Maxwell Egan. It's a pleasure to be with you once again, and I'll be your host for the next hour. Well, folks, something that I'd like to put out there right now, a truth that I would really like people to consider and to factor in with whatever it is that they're researching, is that everything we think we know Everything that's been taught to us by this system, the science we've been presented with, the education we've been given, the history we've been given, and quite literally everything we've been told by this system is a lie. All of it. And the depth of this lie is quite literally so profound and so all-pervasive that it's almost impossible for most people to even see because it is quite literally so big that it covers virtually every single aspect of our lives. Virtually everything we've been told about everything is backwards. And I'm going to cover some topics on the show today that will probably seem very esoteric and right out of left field for people but it's just stuff that needs to be addressed. It's just stuff that I want to talk about. It's important at the beginning of the discussion to lay the groundwork that is needed to even begin thinking about these things. And that groundwork is the clear understanding that everything we've been told is a lie. All of it. Our history, who we are, where we come from, our religions, our food, our medicine, what this world is, quite literally everything, is a lie. And that's why it's so difficult to ever really discover the truth and to wake up the people around us because all of the information that we're even researching, most of it, has been falsified. That is why people are constantly locked into different belief systems, why they continue to argue with each other, on why they continue to perpetuate their divide and conquer programming. Because in everything that they're looking at and all the information that they've got, they never even factor in the reality that in any investigation into the past, which is invariably where we look to find out what happened and what brought us to this point, most of the information that we glean from old books about historical figures has been doctored, rearranged and rewritten, and in some cases it's actually even doubtful that many of these people even actually existed. In many cases, works were attributed to people who didn't do those works. In many cases, discoveries were most likely attributed to people who never made those discoveries. Many events were simply fabricated, and many people simply did not do what we were told they did, and as I said, in the case of many of them, it's doubtful that they ever even existed. Or if they did exist, it very often was not when we were told they existed, and very often the information they presented was doctored to fit the current version of reality. Though very often, no doubt, there were little gems left in there just to keep the people guessing and just to keep the people fighting and arguing and squabbling and looking for the deeper meaning without ever really stepping back and looking at reality as a whole. The thing is, people really do need to understand clearly that this is our starting point. This is what we've got to work with. The fact that everything we've been told is a lie and we cannot rely on any of the information that we get from any books anywhere. Certainly not any books that have been put on the scene since the invention of the printing press, anyway. And that is simply the stark reality of the matter. You know, the true reality is, and has always been, that all we can really rely on 100% is that which we go out and experience in the world for ourselves. And that's a very difficult thing for people to come to terms with. 
However, if one goes out and travels the world and really looks at things open-mindedly, the evidence that everything we've been told is a lie is everywhere and it speaks for itself. And if you really look at it, one of our biggest problems, one of the things that holds us back more than anything else, comes with our blind acceptance of things. Our blind acceptance of what we're given as facts by the academic system, things that we're told and you just take as a matter of course and just take them on as part of everyday life without ever really investigating them. And we do this on so many levels, it's actually quite profound when you step back and look at it. Everyday things we just take as a given and don't ask questions about. And then many people tend to do this when they're researching as well. They just blindly accept what they find online. They find something that reinforces their belief system and they blindly accept it. And they move on from that point. Because that's what belief systems do. As soon as you adopt a belief system, you look for stuff that reinforces that belief system and you disregard everything else. You just close yourself off to all possibilities. That's what is so dangerous about adopting belief systems halfway through this journey of life. Because it's a wondrous world, folks, and it's an amazing world, and it is nothing like what we're told it is, and we are nothing like what we are told we are. The question is, what are we? And what is this world? Where do we come from? How do we get here? And where are we going? And the answer to all of these questions is what we're all searching for at the moment, because we've been led so far from our true path. And the biggest danger in trying to find a way out of this mess is in adopting belief systems along the way and closing yourself off to the myriad of possibilities that are still out there. Now, for the last month or so, perhaps a little bit longer, I've been putting a pretty heavy focus on history. The fact that our history has changed, everything's been manipulated, and nothing is what it seems. A lot of people may think I've lost a little bit of focus off the 5G grid and the smart grid and everything that's coming out, but really it's all interrelated. Now, as I pointed out, history is what got me started on this quest to begin with. And recently there's been so much new information come out regarding history that it's kind of just pulled me back into that rabbit hole because, as I said, it's all interrelated. If we can understand how we got here, then we can see where we're going and why they're rolling this whole smart grid out so quickly. And really when you look at it, folks, the whole progress of civilization hasn't been this gradual thing that we think it has. It's been technology that's been gradually released to us all the way along. This technology already exists. A lot of the technology we've been using for the last 50 to 100 years, I would suggest, already existed. They had it before the Industrial Revolution even. The Industrial Revolution was a cover-up. The Industrial Revolution was put there to convey to us the concept of where we built this great civilization that we've got now, which isn't a great civilization at all. It's a prefab thrown together monstrosity that has been thrown together and slapped in place on the bones of the civilization that exists underneath it. And the reason it's been thrown together and is so slapped together is because it's been done so haphazardly and so hurriedly because they needed to cover up the fact that this civilization is there. And this is all portrayed by the historical event that is portrayed as the Industrial Revolution. Even the term Industrial Revolution, it sounds so impressive and it creates this thing in your mind, you know, this time when we all figured out how things work, when we got machinery and everyone started inventing things and it led to this situation where building up from the mud of all of this stuff that everyone's slapping together and throwing together this huge city, wow, look at what we've got. It creates the whole concept of how this happened and it allowed them to slap all this together so haphazardly and so hurriedly. And what this concept did was it created the timeline needed to make us think that this industrial revolution brought us to this point. But all the technology existed before then. The whole thing has been a scam. It's all been to lead us away from what we really are. Because a lot of the stuff that we are told existed in ancient history wasn't so ancient at all. It was actually quite recent. Now, as I said a few shows ago, one of the things that first struck me when I first went to Peru and saw the walls of Sacsayhuaman was how fresh they looked. And I took a friend there recently, actually, and she also noticed just how fresh all the stonework looked on these walls. You could see that they must have been made from some form of softened stone, and you could see just how new 
all this stonework was. You know, and this type of stonework, polygonal stonework, exists on every single continent that there is on Earth. I mean, it's everywhere. It's even here in Australia, down in Gosford, there's polygonal stonework there in walls where there's ancient Egyptian glyphs. People try to say these are hoaxes and all sorts of things, but they're not. They're real glyphs. They're from an ancient Egyptian text. Actually, if you were going to fake these glyphs, you would probably use known Egyptian characters. And the characters that they've used aren't characters that you'll find in normal books on Egyptology. These are older than those characters. So whoever supposedly forged these glyphs had a very, very good understanding of ancient Egyptians. So that would indicate that they're not forged at all. They're actually real glyphs. And there was a culture that existed, and it was a worldwide culture. You know, polygonal architecture is very, very peculiar. We can't do it today, this particular way of locking stones together, creating walls of interlocking monolithic stones that we can't even move, let alone shape in a manner that they will all fit together in such a way. Make some earthquake proof. It's an incredible style of building. And the fact that it exists on all continents, this is not a coincidence, folks. This is not something that people would just come up with. And there are pyramids found on all continents as well. There's pyramids here in Australia in a place called Gympie. There's pyramids that are all over China. There's more pyramids in China than just about the whole rest of the world combined. There's pyramids all through the Americas. There's the remains of pyramid structures through Europe. There's traces of this culture that can be found everywhere. And as I said, it was a worldwide culture that existed not too long ago, probably up to as recently as two or three hundred years ago. Well, at least the last remnants of it were probably chased out of existence two or three hundred years ago. There appears to have been a huge attempt to basically scour the world and wipe out all trace of this ancient culture and wipe out all trace of anybody who still held the ancient knowledge of how to do the things we used to do. Those who knew how to build these megalithic structures, those who knew how to build all of this stuff that we've got lying around the world, those who knew that type of technology were all chased out of existence and we were moved away from what we were, which was a peaceful world. We lived in a world where all religions lived in peace with each other. We lived in a world where all nations lived in peace with each other. And then a few hundred years ago, this psychopathic, parasitic government system that we've got now superimposed itself over our reality and went out of its way to decimate everybody's memory of who and what they were, everybody's culture, everybody's history. They changed the whole thing. And since that time, they've fed us a complete crock of rubbish. They've told us lies about absolutely every single thing that they can They've lied to us about reality. They've lied to us about every single aspect of reality. They've lied to us in our science about what reality is even made of, of what we're made of, of what we are. Every single thing you can think of, they've lied to us about. And most especially, they've gone out of their way to decimate people's culture and decimate people's memory. Because if you can disconnect the people from their history and from their culture, then you disconnect them from what they are. And this has been an ongoing process. They're still doing it now in Africa, folks. This is what all these wars and battles are about in Africa, because there's still areas of Africa where people are still connected to the earth. People still hold ancient traditions. They still hold ancient knowledge. And they want to get rid of everybody's ancient traditions. They don't want anybody to have their real history. They want to superimpose their own history over the people because that disconnects them from who and what they are. That's what it's all about, folks. That's what the entire process is about. That's what all of this decimation of history, all this decimation of historical artifacts all through the Middle East, all through Europe and all through Africa is all about. Because all of it just further disconnects us from who we are. And they've lied to us on quite literally every single level that you can think of, folks. And again, it's stuff that we just take for granted and never question. The population figures, folks. Overpopulation. How is there 7 billion people in the world? How can that possibly be? 
Well, they just tell us there's 7 billion people in the world and we believe it. But at the turn of the last century, there was 1 billion people in the world, so we were told. So how did that suddenly climb 6 billion people in 100 years? You know, I released a short film back in 2008 called Fight the New World Order with Global Noncompliance, and I was assuming then that the world population figures were 6 billion because that's what we were told, and I'd never really thought about it. But even with that figure, I pointed out in that film that if you gave every man, woman and child on earth a quarter acre block of land, you could fit them in an area the size of Australia and still have half of Queensland and the entire rest of the world left over. And if you gave everybody their own normal house block, you could fit the entire world population in an area the size of Texas. So there is no way the world is overpopulated. And that was when I was assuming the figures were 6 billion. But if the figures were 1 billion at the turn of the last century, then how could they be 6 billion then in 2008, and how could they be 7 billion now in 2018? Are we somehow growing in world population by a billion people a decade? And think about it, folks. A billion people. You know, a billion's a big number. Most people just don't think about it. They don't ever really realise how big a billion is. To them, it's just big. People don't understand the concept of a billion. You know, a billion seconds ago, it was around about 969. A billion minutes ago, it's around about what we're presented with as being the time of Christ. You could get a billion one dollar notes and put them end to end, and you could get to the moon and go twice the way around the moon and back again. That's even assuming the moon is as far away as what they tell us. So a billion is a big number. How have we grown by a billion people in 10 years, and how do we grow by 6 billion people in the last 120? You know, when you look at it, folks, you've got to have two babies per household to keep the population stable. That isn't even with population growth. And since the turn of the last century, we've had World War I, World War II, all those people die. We've had people dying of diseases. We've had all sorts of wars and all sorts of depopulations happening all over, not to mention the 262 million people killed by their own governments in the last 100 years. Let's not forget to take that figure into account. And look at modern times. With the introduction of plastics, we've seen a huge drop in the male sperm count. Since the introduction of vaccines and modern so-called medicine, we've seen autism go off the charts. It used to be one in a hundred people, now it's around about one in ten, and they're predicting that it'll soon be one in four. And of course, that just all seems perfectly normal to people. And these people certainly aren't having any babies, and we've got men going their own way. All of this division of the sexes now, people simply aren't having as many babies as they were. You're lucky to find people that have more than one child these days. I mean, sure, you'll still find some big families. you have people who have two or three or four, even five kids, but you won't find every family doing it. So it doesn't really even out. And a lot of families just aren't having babies because they're too worried about their careers. Because you've got both men and women all both chasing their career, and it's all about the career. It's all about the status. Usually even the partner they get is someone who will help them in their career. It's usually a fashion accessory or a career accessory for them rather than a real-life partner. So not only can the population not be growing, it's not even remaining stable. Because like I said, you've got to have two child per couple in order to keep the population stable. And when you look at the amount of people having babies, it really doesn't average itself out. Because we've been taught not to have babies. This is what the whole sexual revolution was about, sexual freedom. Taught to have more sex, but have less children. Make it all about the pleasure of sex and not about procreation, because... We don't want sex to be anything sacred. We want it to be all about fun and all about promiscuity. Go out and have as many partners as you want. Just don't have children. Contraception, all of this stuff. So how is the population growing? The population isn't growing. The population is shrinking. Even when you look at all the ancient civilizations that are lying all over the earth and the size of these civilizations, the extent of them, and you think about the amount of population it would have taken to construct these civilizations, there's very likely something like 20 or 30 billion people on Earth back at the time these things were constructed, simply because of the manpower you would have needed to do it. And look at the world now, 
And look at some of the size of these cultures compared to our cities. And look at the world now. Look at all the empty space. There isn't 7 billion people on this earth. Go out and drive around. Go out. Leave the city. Go out and drive around the country and tell me where all the people are. Look at all the houses. Where's all the houses? Where's all of this population that we're told is crawling all over the earth, destroying everything? It's not. There isn't this massive population. This is because everyone's packed into these cities and they're controlled by having to go down all these highways and all these roads that have got street lights and everything's all congested and it looks like there's a lot of people because everyone's packed into these tight areas and you're only allowed to walk between the lines. So it looks like it's crowded everywhere, but it's not. There isn't that many people on Earth. No way is there 7 billion people on Earth. Why are the trees in most of what we call old growth forests on the earth only around about 200 years old? And what happened to all the people who built all of these ancient cultures? What, they just mysteriously disappeared? But of course they can tell us that and they can get away with it and people will believe it because they push it back in time and tell us, oh, it was thousands of years ago. When the reality is that it wasn't. And do you know that there's six million bodies buried beneath Paris? Someone pointed out to me the other day, there's actually catacombs beneath Paris. And there's an area that's open to the public, about two kilometers long, where you can walk through. Someone posted a YouTube video of it. And there are six million people buried in these catacombs. And that's just in the two kilometer section that you can walk through. But these catacombs go for about 30 kilometers underneath Paris. So what is in the rest of them and how many people are buried in the rest of them? Now, the excuse for these people being here is that the cemeteries of Paris were overflowing and the smell of rotting flesh became too much. So they had to relocate all the bodies to these underground catacombs. But this doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, who did this? Why did they do it in this way? Why did they choose to place them in catacombs beneath the city? Who dug such an incredibly extensive system of catacombs simply to stack bodies in them? All stacked femurs and skulls like rolls of parchment with the skulls placed at strategic points throughout the stack to create sigils in the walls. So the people in Paris are walking over these catacombs built of human bones and skulls with the skulls shaped into sigils. What do these sigils mean? What is the energy that's being generated by these catacombs and who are all of these people and how many of them are really down there? How did they all die and why were they all put there? When? did they all die? How did so many people die? And we didn't hear about it. What, they relocated the cemeteries? This is a hell of a place to relocate bodies from cemeteries and a hell of a way to do it. And it also begs the question, how many other cities on earth contain similar catacombs that we just don't know about? But as I said, folks, that is six million people that are stacked in a two kilometer section of tunnel. These tunnels go on for another 30 kilometers. So how many people are really down there? And again, how many cities, if were we to look, would we find similar things? Because the thing is, we can find remnants of this worldwide civilization that existed and we can find clear evidence that it was not too long ago. So the other question is, what happened to all of these people? I mean, obviously there are remnants of this civilization that still exist. Obviously, many of us are still remnants of this civilization. And you really can find traces of it everywhere, folks. Even if you look at South American legends, they'll talk about Quetzalcoatl who came there and taught them all of their culture, taught them how to build pyramids, build all their structures for them. He's named as Kalkulkan in other cultures, South American cultures, also named as Viracocha. He's described as a white man, beard, long hair, quite a tall being, came on a raft of feathered serpents, taught them all their skills and left, said he would come back. And you'll find these similar tales exist everywhere of these white people who came and showed the natives how to build all of their structures. 
and they were a peaceful and loving people and all of these cultures got on fine all of the ancient religions got on fine all across Europe you'll find still churches that display crosses that have the symbol of Islam displayed beneath the cross because they were both essentially aspects of the same faith simply approached from different angles by different cultures but they both lived in perfect respect and harmony for each other because both respected each other's prophets each other's healers each other's teachers there was never any animosity between Christianity and Islam. It was almost like an Islamo-Christian faith that existed right across Europe and across most of the world because you can find depictions in many places where these religions embraced each other. There was no animosity between any faiths because really when you look at all these faiths, they're all based in an understanding of peace and tolerance for everybody else anyway. The division came later and the division was superimposed over the people again by this parasitic government system that took control of the world and wiped out the last culture that existed here before us. And again, this has been done quite recently, folks. It hasn't been thousands of years since this culture existed. It wasn't thousands of years ago that all of these things were destroyed. It was only hundreds of years ago. And the fact is that very recently things were not the way they are now. We haven't had centuries of bloody warfare between each other vying for power of the greatest nation since the fall of the Roman Empire. There was no Roman Empire. We have simply been fed a false history and the reality is that we never had any war at all. You know, as I've often said, folks, it only takes one generation to change history. And when you look at that and you see what's been done to us, it's actually very encouraging because that also indicates that it's only going to take around about one generation to change things back and get things back to what we need to be and what we should be. But we've got to be prepared to put all of our belief systems aside, put all of our differences aside, allow people to think differently, know that nobody has got the right information anyway. We've got to put our egos aside and allow everyone to just believe what they want to believe for now and understand that we've been manipulated and controlled and trained to argue with each other about our differences. And the fact of the matter is that nobody really knows what's going on because none of the information we've got to base any of our understandings on is reliable anyway. And what we need to do is focus on stopping this system in its tracks right now and giving ourselves a chance to regroup to find out what the truth is. And this is not going to happen unless we can put our differences down, stop trolling each other, stop attacking each other, stop spreading distrust and division with each other, stop identifying everything else with our belief system and attacking everybody who doesn't think like we do, Put it all down, stop fighting, and pull ourselves away from this psychopathic, parasitic system which is currently controlling the direction that we're going. Now, this whole system exists because we hold it up, folks, and that is the solution. Pull your energy away from this system and do it in every way you can, in every way, shape, and form that you can find, and everyone should make it a point in their lives to do this. You've got to disconnect from the system because we are the ones who hold it up and that is the only solution to escaping from it. Each person out there has to individually remove the support and remove the energy they give to the system. We're the only ones who can do it, folks, and we have to pay attention, take responsibility for ourselves and really make a stand. Yeah, so considering the population figures, it may be quite a confrontational thing for people to think about. But really, if you think about it a little bit deeper, you'll probably find that it's something that you never actually did really think about. It's just something that we take for granted. We just get presented these figures and we assume that it's true. But the reality is that everything we're told by this system is untrue, so why would the population figures be true? You know, so many people have been killed in the last hundred years since the world population figures were apparently one billion. So how it could possibly be seven billion now is really beyond all logic. Even now it's predicted that 10 million people will die of starvation in Yemen by the end of this year, simply due to the ongoing onslaught from Saudi Arabia. That's 10 million people. Wipe that off the population figures, folks. 
All the people that have been killed in Syria, all the people that were killed in Iraq, all the people that are dying in all of these third world places that we've decimated so much that we've turned into war zones. There's no way the population figures are what they tell us they are. It's as simple as that, you know, we just don't look at common everyday things and ask questions about them, we just take things at face value. And actually, by way of example, someone posted a most amazing comment on one of my YouTube videos, either last week or the week before, again, something that people just don't think about and certainly something that I'd never thought about. He posted a comment and it said, water is not H2O. I found that to be quite a remarkable statement for someone to make, so I read his comment and he actually went through the math and he pointed out the fact that water, we're told, is H2O, which is therefore comprised of two hydrogen molecules and one oxygen molecule. But he pointed out that two hydrogen molecules, i.e. 100 litres of liquid hydrogen, actually weighs 7 kilos and that 50 litres of liquid oxygen actually weighs 12 kilos, and so when mixed they have a combined weight or mass of 19 kilos and a volume of 150 litres. Whereas a volume of 150 litres of water actually has a mass of 150 kilos. So that indicates that there is 131 kilos missing from the equation. I found it to be quite an interesting thing to point out. So, what is water? And really, when you think about it, it's also kind of remarkable that we just take it for granted that by combining hydrogen, which is a gas, with oxygen, which is a gas, we somehow come up with water. Quite an interesting equation that he pointed out and a great example of how we just take things at face value and tend not to ask questions. And even more interesting with that equation is when you factor into it the reality that we are made of 85% water. So what is it that we're actually made of? Because it's certainly not this inanimate, unconscious stuff they call H2O. But yeah, interesting data on water and if anybody else has any data on that I'd be very interested to hear I mean I'm very open on the topic and be interesting to hear I mean perhaps he's somehow wrong in his equation but it seems pretty logical to me so perhaps that's something people might want to look into and again it serves as a great example of how we simply take things at face value you know and this is again why we continually argue with each other so much because we never really take into account the reality that we just don't have any factual information to go on. Now, unless we can get through things like ancient books or our own world experience, we're not going to find it anywhere else. And that's why all the trolling has to stop. That's why all the division has to stop. And that's why everyone has to put down their belief systems. Now, the focus should be on stopping this system in its tracks right now and stopping it progressing any further forward so that we've got a chance to regroup and find out what the real truths are. And that's only going to happen if we put down all of our differences. And again, that's why people just have to stop trolling people who think differently and trying to impose their belief systems on them. And the flat earthers, you know, I respect a lot of flat earth research and you've got to stop trolling me because I'm not your enemy. I don't buy into the globe model anymore. I buy into the flat model. I don't see it as a relevant issue. I think there's a higher harmonic and you're never going to convince me to close my mind into a belief system while I still have questions in any direction. That's just the way I think. And for all the globe earthers out there as well, you've got to stop attacking the flat earthers the way you are. There are a lot of good people in the flat earth movement, but there's shills and trolls on both sides, and we've just got to stop responding to them and stop buying into all the distrust and the division that people are trying to spread. Because what you're going to find, folks, is, is the ones making all the accusations against others are the real shills because the only result of these accusations is division and that is exactly what the government wants and that is exactly what perpetuates the slavery system. You know, the solution to this problem is stepping away from the system, folks. I've been telling you this for 10 years. 
so many people also troll me because they say, Max, you're always telling us the problems, but you never provide any solutions because they want some form to fill out. They want someone to go and vote for. They want some movement to go and join. They don't understand that they are the ones who hold the system up by giving it their energy. And we don't even need a violent revolution. Just stop supporting the system. Pull away from it. We all have things that can benefit each other. We all have customs and cultures that can benefit each other and that we love about each other and we all used to coexist peacefully until this cacistocracy of parasitic psychopaths created this government system and set up the multinational, multi-generational crime family that we know as our international government system. These people have purposefully brought the world to the state that it is in and they are depopulating this earth right now while we are busy arguing with each other about the details of the prison that we are kept in. The reality is that there are two races here, folks. There are humans and there is a race that looks like humans, but this is the race of psychopaths. And they use all of our good points and all of our compassion and our humanity against ourselves. And it's time for people to admit this. Put your ego and your belief system down. It's time to wake up, ladies and gentlemen, and it's time to pull your support from this system and realize that we have been played on every single way you can imagine. Every single piece of information, every single book, every single religious system, every single government system, every single tool of division that they can think of has been used against us and it's time for us to put it all down and return to ourselves and return to each other and return to our natural state of abundance because that is where we belong. It is only this system that keeps us from that state. We don't need government, we don't need war, we don't need this monetary system, we don't need these rules. Integrity has no need of rules. We do not need to walk between the lines. What we need to do is remember who and what we are, put our differences aside and all walk together to freedom. And if we can't learn to do that, then we're lost. You know, there's no remedy to be found through any type of system that anyone's going to offer anybody. There's no remedy to be found in any political movement. There's no remedy to be found by pushing your belief system on anybody. There just isn't. You know, people are going to believe different things because it's what they do. People have had access to different information, even people who are researching whatever. They've all looked down different rabbit holes. They've all got access to different information. It doesn't matter. And the ultimate fact of the matter is that you just don't know anyway because we can't rely on pretty well everything that we think we can rely on. We can't even rely on water being what we're told it is. So what can we rely on? You know, all we can rely on is ourselves and on each other. And that's been the message I've been attempting to share with people for so long. But my great hope and my great desire through all this is for people to put their differences down, to see the power within themselves, and to just express that. You know, see the power in yourself so you can see the beauty in others and just express it, folks. You don't need this system. But that is it for me, folks. I'm now completely out of time. I'll look forward to speaking to you again next week. Please take very good care. Until then, in La Keshe.